welcome to our panel presentation. Uh, more options for home with care and quality in the comfort of your own home and ask the doctor. We're happy to be here today. My name is Linda Ward. I'm the president and CEO of Gulfside Healthcare Services. And Gulfside is a nonprofit community organization serving about a thousand patients a day through a continuum of care with both skilled uh, home care and rehab, uh, palliative care for chronic illness, and hospice care. And today we have a wonderful panel presentation of skilled experts and they're going to share some very important information um, about how you can receive care in your own home and stay in your own home through the quality of services that we have to offer. Um, and today our, I'd like to announce who our panel is. We have Joanne Gross, and Joanne is the Director of Social and Volunteer Services for Gulfside Healthcare Services. We also have Kylie Jones, who is our Home Health Administrator. And then we have Jennifer Williams, who is the Director of Patient Care Services. We have Rhonda Matthews, who is our Vice President of Business Development. Michael Griffith, our Director of Business Development. And Dr. Lisa Barker, our Medical Director. So our panelists are here to spend a little time with you in their areas of specialty. And then we're gonna open it up to you for any questions that you have. This is your time to ask the doctor anything you wanna know um, and any of the panelists. And then um, we'll also stay at the end of the presentation just in case you have a few more questions or if you're interested in having a home assessment. Okay, so I'm very happy to have you here. Welcome again on behalf of Gulfside Healthcare Services. And I'd like to now introduce Joanne Ross. of uh, thriving over 55 really has a lot to do with maintaining balance, uh, finding contentment, and finding meaning through this journey of aging. And as we do age, it is really important to maintain a healthy lifestyle and to also manage all of our health care needs. Right. Are there any caregivers in the audience? Okay. So if you're a caregiver, you know that that is an extra set of challenges to maintaining a healthy lifestyle and managing health care needs, not only for yourself, but also for your loved one. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how we can help you as a caregiver as well. So we want to make sure that we're staying active and making good choices so that we can continue to have a great quality of life. So there's a number of things that we can do to uh, keep ourselves moving and keeping ourselves healthy. And you've heard a lot of these and uh, you'll hear them again today. But one of them is eating well. We want to make sure that we're preparing balanced meals. We're not overdoing it with the alcohol and nicotine. And we're really making sure that we're eating really good balanced uh, meals. A, uh, pretzels and um, tortilla chips, as my mother likes to have for dinner, does not really cut it. So we want to make sure that we are getting some good nutrition. Right? We want to exercise regularly, not only our bodies, but also our minds. So we want to make sure that we're staying active. Maybe we're going to the gym or involving ourselves in other extracurricular activities to keep our minds and our bodies sharp. Because we want to make sure that those two things are the things that keep us going. Uh, medically, we want to make sure that we're making sure we're addressing all of our routine screenings, all of our vaccinations. We want to make sure that we're in regular contact with our doctor, and we want to make sure that we're also up to date on any of the public health guidelines that are coming down. And you know, as we do get older, that does become more and more important for us. And with medication, if you do take medication, usually at this stage of our lives, we're probably on at least one, right? We wanna make sure that we maintain a regular supply of those and take them as directed. So we wanna make sure that we're doing all of those things that we can to address all of our other things going on. We also want to take some time to slow down, right? We wanna make sure that we're practicing some mindfulness, maybe meditating. Uh, and, and engaging in relaxation activities as well. Our bodies need time to, re and minds need time to recharge. So even though we wanna stay active, we also have to have that recovery time. We wanna make sure that we're getting quality sleep. And it seems like as I get older, I seem to be able to get less and less sleep and things are waking me up, but we want to strive to at least get that which our body needs, right? We want to uh, adjust uh, accept our our, uh, our decline, our and oh no, I'm sorry. Accept offers of help, right? 
It is important for us to realize when we might need some help and to accept some help and also to seek out help if we need. Right? If we are um, somebody, if we've lost a loved one, then it is important to potentially and hopefully seek out some bereavement services so that you can take care of that so that all of the other pieces of your life can go, go along well. Right? And we have to plan for emergencies and that goes along with the stress and the anxiety and maybe the depression relief if we're planning for those emergencies then we're not being stressed and feeling anxious about an upcoming hurricane or something like that so making sure that we're doing those plannings and joining social clubs getting with uh, uh, others of like mind maybe learning a new hobby watching tv reading all of those things and really what's important as well is to really surrounding yourself with positive people and this is the part of me, uh, for me, that I find a little difficult because we all want to have friends. But at this point, we're not teenagers looking to fit into a niche or finding our way. We know our way. We know what we like and what we don't. So really making sure that our friends are those that are going to support us and provide some, some quality to our lives, some, some value. Right? So it is okay to say, no, I don't think this person is really going to do it for me. And we all like a little bit of gossip, but when we start getting along with the negative stuff, then that can kind of derail us a little bit. So that positivity is really important. So that positive mindset uh, and, and pursuing all of those things that bring you joy and happiness are really important. And all of these things, while being beneficial at every, any age, become increasingly important as, as we age. Because we can't turn back the clock have to move forward and live our best life. So I know it's hard to accept all the changes that are happening. My mom is fighting it tooth and nail, uh, but I have to remind her that there's nothing that she can do about some of those things. It's just natural. So we have to recognize that. We have to accept that. And we also have to adapt. Right? We have to adapt to the things that are going on for, uh, for us at any, at any age, really, and then just be resilient. So, um, and if you have a debilitating illness or you're caring for someone else, then that makes it all the more important for that. So our agency can help you remain in your home. We can address all of those lifestyle changes and support any that you need to engage in or want to keep. And so we do have this continuum of care here at Goldside Healthcare Services. Right? So um, we want to talk to you a little bit more about that continuum of care. So I'm going to turn it over to Kylie Jones, who's our administrator of Home Health. Good morning, everybody. Um, our goal for Home Health is to keep you in your home and maintain the highest level of function that you that you would like without making you go in and out of the hospital. We can take care of you after uh, illness, injury, maybe a hip or knee replacement. Um, we can we can take care of you at home so you don't have to go to a rehab facility. You can get out of that hospital sooner and recover in the comfort of your own home. Um, we are not just sending a nurse to come and check your vitals, although that is something we do, but we, we have multiple disciplines. We use skilled nursing, <coughs> physical, occupational, and speech therapy to provide skilled services in the home. And then we use medical social workers to help help you get in touch with some community resources that may, that may be able to assist you in home as well. <coughs> Like I said, nurses aren't just there to check your vitals. We do a thorough medication review, um, diet teaching, important teaching for caregivers and patients on things they might not know. For example, a diet, you maybe you're on a low sodium diet. A lot of people have to be on a low sodium diet, high blood pressure, many other conditions. We have found several people using a salt substitute and those are riddled with potassium, which affects your heart and makes you feel sick. And just little changes like that can really improve your health. Physical therapy is not just there to do, you know, arm raises and, and, and foot pumps and put you on the little bicycle. They do a lot of things to help you set up your home safely. When you're in a rehab facility, you're in a very controlled environment. There's no throw rug, there's not an end table, there's not your coffee table. And physical therapy will help you to navigate your own home so that you can recover at home in your environment really know how to work with what you have. Occupational therapy is not there to get you back to work or just help you learn how to button up your shirt. They, uh, most falls in the home happen in the bathroom. 
and OT specializes in making sure your bathroom is set up safely, helping you learn how to transfer in and out of the shower safely, um, helping you to learn how to transfer in and out of your car. If you've had any sort of uh, joint surgery, that, that's a big deal, learning how to get in and out of your car. They also provide a lot of um, adaptive training if you've had a stroke or Parkinson's, and you wanna go out and eat with your family, but you don't wanna have to be fed, that can be embarrassing, and they can work with you on how to do that, how to feed yourself so that you can enjoy the things you like. They'll get you back to golfing, driving, fishing, those kind of things. <clears throat> Speech therapy is not just for people who have difficulty speaking. They can provide some cognitive training as, as dementia sets in, um, kind of reorientation techniques for caregivers. They also will help with swallowing. A lot of people don't realize that speech therapy helps with swallowing. If you're a Parkinson's or a stroke patient or a caregiver of one, they can help with adaptive techniques for swallowing. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then for medical social workers, a lot of people think if we get a social worker involved, we're trying to make you leave your house, trying to send you to a nursing home. And in fact, that's the furthest thing from the truth. Medical social workers are able to get you in touch with some community resources. Maybe you can't cook for yourself anymore. They can help you get Meals on Wheels. They can help you get in touch with caregiver services. They can help you work on a power of attorney, advanced directives, those kinds of things. <clears throat> so again, the, the goal for skilled home health is to take care of you in your home, keep you out of the hospital, keep you out of the rehab facility, so every, you heal better when you're in a, your own environment. And that's our goal. So we hope, if it ever comes, that we would have the honor of taking care of you and give us a call if you need anything. I'm going to introduce you, Jennifer Williams, Advanced Registered Nurse Practitioner, and she is our Director of uh, Patient Care Services. Before you move on, oh. your question. You said something early on about Yep. I'm going to let Dr. Barker talk about that. Um, is that okay? Can I do it now? Or? I, I can now because I'm, I'm likely to forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So but, um, a lot of salt substitutes are potassium based instead of sodium based. Can you hear me okay? A little higher. A little higher. Okay. I'm trying not to get the feedback. A lot of salt substitutes are potassium based instead of sodium based. And as you know, uh, potassium affects the heart rhythm. So a lot of the medications that you may be taking for diuretics, if you have congestive heart failure, you may or may not need potassium with those. So potassium levels are supposed to stay within a normal range. If they get too high or too low, it can affect the heart's rhythm. So if you're taking potassium supplements as a salt substitute or as a prescribed potassium supplement, you need to make sure that your physician is aware that you're using that because they may need to monitor your potassium levels more frequently. Okay, excellent question, thank you. Can you hear me okay? So palliative care is a specialized type of medical care for people with serious illnesses. It focuses on providing patients with relief from symptoms, including pain, and also provides assistance with managing the stress of serious illness, no matter the diagnosis. The goal of palliative care is to improve the quality of life for patients and their families. Palliative care primarily focuses on anticipating, preventing, diagnosing and treating symptoms experienced during serious illness. It assists patients and their families to make important medical decisions that align with their goals of care. Palliative care is covered under Medicare Part B by most participating Medicaid programs and some private insurances. It is covered the same as any other consulting service, so co-pays may apply. It does not include nursing, or aid services, medications, or in-home care. As the illness progresses and end of life approaches, the role of palliative care intensifies and focuses more on aggressive symptom management and psychosocial support. Skilled palliative care staff are able to identify when patients may benefit from more advanced palliative services, which would include hospice care. So I'd like to introduce um, Rhonda Matthews, our VP of business development to talk about hospice services. Thank you. So what is hospice? <clears throat> hospice is a philosophy of care that is provided to terminally ill patients and their families in the comfort of wherever they call home. To be considered for hospice, a patient must have a life-limiting illness whose doctor believes 
has less than six months to live if the disease takes its natural progression. The benefits of hospice that you will receive is a team of professionals trained to address your physical, psychosocial, and spiritual needs for the patient and support to the family and caregivers. Hospice providers are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to respond to a patient or a caregiver's needs that may arise. The hospice team consists of nurses, certified nursing assistants, social workers, chaplains, nurse practitioners, physicians, and volunteers. And this care is provided wherever a patient calls home, be it at your, your house, an assisted living facility, a skilled nursing facility, a hospital. We are there wherever you need us to be. We also have care centers like the one located down the street in Wesley Chapel. And those are available for short-term stays for patients that need uh, to address perhaps symptom management, uh, symptom control, pain control, or respite uh, relief for caregivers. I wanted to discuss a little bit about hospice myths. A lot of times we get asked questions on that people believe of what hospice is, and some of it is, is not accurate. So one myth, myth that we get asked often is hospice is a place to go and live. Hospice is not a place to go, but again, a philosophy. Hospice comes to wherever you call home. While most people prefer staying in their homes, hospice care is provided in hospitals, nursing homes, assisted livings, or at one of our care centers for a short-term stay. Hospice is only for cancer patients. No, about 60% of hospice patients nationwide have diagnosis other than cancer. Hospice serves patients and families coping with end-stage diseases, such as emphysema, Alzheimer's, heart, or neuromuscular disease. Hospice is only for dying patients. Hospice care is provided for patients when a cure is no longer an option. Unfortunately, many patients receive hospice care too late and they don't get the full benefits of hospice from an earlier referral. We have patients that graduate from hospice. They no longer need or qualify for hospice. And if down the road they need hospice again, Gulf Side is here and we can see if you qualify again at that time. If I say yes to hospice, I'm locked in and I can't change my mind. No, you can come on to hospice and if you decide it's not right for you, it doesn't meet your needs, you can revoke services and we can come back at a later date if, that, um, if the timing is, is right at that point. If I go on hospice, I will lose my doctor. No, if your physician agrees, you absolutely can keep your physician. And our hospice team, such as Dr. Barker, will coordinate your care with your physician. Hospice is expensive. Hospice is covered by a Medicare benefit. Most private insurers also cover hospice as well. This means no financial burden of medications, equipment, clinical services, it's a sharp contrast to the huge financial expense when hospice is not used. There is no out-of-pocket cost for patients, and at Golfside, no patient is turned away because of their inability to pay. And finally, a common myth is hospice is giving up. Hospice is not giving up on your loved one. It's about shifting the priority from finding a cure to being comfortable providing this care so the patient can take back the control to fulfill their wishes and to determine how they want to remain comfortable, pain-free, wherever they, whether it's at home or in a facility, until the end is upon us. Now our next presenter is Michael Griffiths, Director of Business Development. Good morning. So. How do you know when is, it time, when is it time to refer to hospice? Quite simply, if you have a life-limiting illness that's in a state of decline and you're seeking a palliative plan of care, it's time to have an evaluation time. 
The good news is it's a very simple process to initiate a referral. Of course, we always encourage you to speak to your physician and request that you'd like to have an evaluation done, but anyone can pick up the phone and begin the process. You can pick up the phone, a family member can pick up the phone, call us and simply request to have an evaluation done. We'll handle the rest. We can call the physician and get an order, um, or we can get the order, or our physician can write the order as well if you don't have a physician. At that point, a nurse will come out and do a full evaluation to see how we can best meet your care needs. That is a unique advantage with referring to Gulfside. We are the only entity in Pasco County that provides all three service lines, hospice, home health, and palliative care. So if we come out to do a hospice evaluation and you decide you are not ready or you don't currently meet criteria, that's okay. As an alternative, we may be able to provide home health and palliative in your home with the same goal, to keep you home and out of the hospital. That's the primary goal of all three service lines, hospice, home health, and palliative, is to keep you home, comfortable, pain-free, and out of the hospital. An important part to remember, though, is it's always your choice. Just having the evaluation done does not mean you can't change your mind. If you do meet criteria and you do decide to begin your hospice care, we can, begin, we can begin that care, as we've mentioned before, wherever you call home. Sometimes hospice can be utilized for short-term symptom management, as well as Rhonda mentioned, during a crisis, which is an opportunity to possibly utilize our inpatient care center at the Rucky Center to help manage those symptoms in crisis, and it's also another way to avoid going to the hospital. The goal of our inpatient care center is to get you back home, manage the symptoms, stabilize the situation, and get you back home. Our care center on the east side is our Rucky Center where we have 12 beds. We also have a wing at Heather Hill on the west side. And soon we're going to be, we're going to open a brand new 24 bed care center on the west side of Pasco as well. We'll be, big, we'll be breaking ground this December and opening next December. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call. It's always okay to ask questions, whether it's calling us directly or asking your physician, and we can handle the rest. Now, I'm gonna pass you over to our clinical expert, Dr. Barker. She is our, by the way, she is our medical director, so she oversees everything. <laughs> I oversee the medical staff. <laughs> I oversee the physicians and nurse practitioners, don't give me that much responsibility, thank you. Thank you all again, I'm Dr. Lisa Barker, um, and I want to kind of sum things up a little bit and touch on some of the things that my colleagues have spoken about, and then we're gonna open it up for questions. And I like to say, you know, how often do you get to ask a physician questions without having to pay them for it? So here's your opportunity, okay? So we'll get back to that in just a few minutes. Several of my colleagues mentioned the word continuum, the continuum of care. And I wanna explain that a little bit. A continuum is not a timeline, okay? In a timeline, like your life, you move from A to B to C, or whatever else is down the road for you. A continuum of care for us means that you can move back and forth along that line, okay? So one thing that was not mentioned yet is you can receive palliative care services and home health services together, right? All hospice care is palliative in nature, but not all palliative care is hospice. So our palliative care um, business line is focusing on those patients who have life-limiting illnesses but are not yet appropriate for hospice care. They may be receiving physical therapy through home health care, so you can receive those two things at the same time. So I want you to think about this not only in terms of your own selves and your own health, but those of you who are caregivers or may become caregivers of relatives, neighbors, you know, parents, siblings, you know, think about these things and how these services can be helpful for you. It's not only support just for the patient, but it's also support for the caregivers and family. And that's something we very much pride ourselves on is being able to provide social services, support and community resources for, for our patients, okay? I wanna give you a, a couple of other scenarios, personal kind of scenarios about these, uh, this continuum. For instance, a patient who's had three exacerbations of congestive heart failure within the last six months, and every time they go in the hospital, they just are put on medications to pull the fluid off. But there's nothing that can be done to really help that patient get better. Sometimes those patients are referred for hospice care. We also saw this during our, our uh, COVID pandemic that we've had patients who were hospitalized for very severe uh, respiratory failure related to uh, the, the COVID infection, and they got referred for hospice care. But you know what, sometimes they get better. They get better, and as 
you mentioned, they can graduate from hospice care. So we have to, at regular intervals, as mandated by Medicare, make sure patients are still qualifying for hospice care. And if you improve, great. We are happy to graduate you to home health care or palliative care or other things that are appropriate for you, okay? A very, very personal story for me. I, I came to Florida seven years ago to practice hospice full time. I've been doing it part time for 20 years. My background is family medicine. I had a young mother in, in my hospice practice and she had a hereditary form of breast cancer, had two young school aged children, who was married, and she came onto our hospice service because her symptoms were so poorly controlled that she'd given up. She didn't want to do any more treatment. She didn't want to do any, any more chemotherapy because her pain and other side effects like nausea were so poorly controlled. We work very intensively with this patient. I like to think we do this for all of our patients who are willing to follow our plan of care and listen to our recommendations. But we work very intensely with this patient. And you know, in a few months, she was doing better. Pain was controlled, the nausea was controlled. And she said, you know, Dr. Barker, I, I wanna go try therapy again. So we sent her back to her oncologist. She decided to go with an aggressive plan of care. She revocated from the hospice services, as, as we said, got her some home health initially to help her get stronger so that she could tolerate the therapy, with the, the physical therapy so that she could tolerate her chemotherapy and the, the physician was willing to you know, give her a chance of treatment again. And things went on. And I kind of lost touch with her. Okay. About a year and a half later, she came back to us, came back to our hospice uh, care facility. Um, at this point in time, her disease had progressed despite therapy and she was actively dying at that point. But her husband came up to me and gave me a big hug and said, you gave us a year and a half. And if we hadn't had that year and a half, she wouldn't have gotten to see these babies grow up that much more. She died a few days later. But that's one of the greatest victories for me is to be able to help someone by palliating their symptoms for them to be able to get treatments that may help them to be able to extend their life. So again, as my colleagues have said, it's about how you're living, not about how you're dying. And one other myth that, that we deal with all the time that, that I would like to say is that hospice speeds up my death. We don't. You are a ship sailing on a sea. We don't make you get to port sooner. We don't delay your arrival. All we do is make your journey comfortable. So remember that, we're here about comfort. So having said that, you've heard me enough. I think I'll turn it back over to Linda. So I hope this was helpful so far. Have you learned some things about the continuum, about the different services? Um, I hope so. And um, really, this is the best team I could ever uh, introduce you to. They are real experts. So they're gonna answer some questions for you. I'm just gonna open it up to any questions you have for Dr. Barker or any of our panelists here. And again, if anyone is interested in having us come and do an assessment, or if you'd like to talk to us after this presentation, if you have a special need, you know, we're here for you. You don't have to um, worry uh, about your questions or if you qualify, we can we can help you with anything you need. So, any questions? Nobody has a question? Yes, go ahead. You mentioned you moved your horse from Chapel. Where were you located? It's actually Zephyr Hills. It's about uh, 10 miles from here, just east in Zephyr Hills um, off of Dean Dairy Road near 54, between Eland and 54. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yes, go ahead. At Gulfside, uh, we do have a caregiver support services program. We do recognize that uh, healthcare, family healthcare provider, family loved ones are the largest healthcare provider nationwide. So we do recognize that they need a little bit special support uh, in terms of keeping themselves healthy and moving as well as their, their, um, their loved one. So we have a program that is targeted for our caregivers that support them in a number of ways. Uh, we have nurses and uh, CNAs who can come in and teach you specific tasks like how to transfer from a bed to a chair, how to give bed baths safely, or how to really look at your home and make sure that everything is safe. We do have a psychosocial part of it where we're addressing all of the mental health 
and more of the social stuff, because we do know that if you're a caregiver, it can be very alienating, right? Exactly. And, and you kind of give up all of your, you know, the things you used to do. So part of our, our uh, psychosocial piece of it, our, our therapeutic part, is talking with you and other caregivers about things like guilt and resentment. That seems to be a big one uh, that we see a lot. Or how to um, make sure that you are um, dealing with family conflict. Because there's a lot of time, if you're a caregiver, you aren't sure, you want to go a certain route, but you have care family members who are thinking differently than you are. So we help our caregivers to navigate those family conflicts and learn how to, to say no. Right? That's a big thing. because Any information seems to be hard it's because the assurances don't want to talk to me. Right. And it's getting the information through my mother. Right. Is navigating the system. Right. And, and yes, navigating the system is quite a challenge. And our hospice social workers, as well as our, our home health and palliative care social worker, are very adept at helping you do that. Right. But we do have our... our we do have our caregiver support program that really provides as much support as we can uh, we can to each one of our caregivers. Is there a direct call lines or do we do it online? How do we? You can call our direct uh, our, our direct line here, and we do have a, a coordinator, yes. <laughs> a caregiver support services coordinator, who can talk to you about our program to see how it is that we can support and help you. Training. <laughs> Lots of training. Yes. Yes. That's one of the most important things at the evaluation is we will let you know, we tailor everything we do to meet your needs. Everybody's different, every situation is different. So we will come out and we will be able to go over, here's what we can do for you, here are your options. And that's also an opportunity for you to ask questions and to voice your needs. And the nurse at that time can let you know, here's what we can do. Yeah, I, it, it's different minute to minute. Mm -hmm. So I, I need somebody if I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes ma'am. We do have online as well. There are there's a form you can fill out if you go to GulfsideHealthCareServices.org, and we also have a table up front by the front um, door, yeah. right by the front door, so you can stop there and we can get your contact information. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? You've got a doctor without a copay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much for attending. Thank you. We appreciate your attention.